Good evening. I just want to remind everyone if they make sure that their mask is up over their nose, so that's the most effective. Uh, and what you're doing is you're protecting the person next to you, making them feel more comfortable. And likewise, if they do that, they'll make you comfortable. So masks uh, and that remains over your nose uh, while you're here in the church. Thank you. Good evening. Welcome to the celebration of the Eucharist. Especially remembered at Mass today is Alice Franconi. We stand now to greet our celebrant with the entrance antiphon. Within your will, O Lord, all things are established, and there is none that can resist your will. For you have made all things, the heaven and the earth, and all that is held within the circle of heaven, you are the Lord of all. Begin our celebration of Eucharist, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. We prepare to offer the Mass by calling to mind our own sins, asking God's forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us all, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, when the abundance of your kindness surpass the merits and the desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Let me now sing of my friend, my friend's song concerning his vineyard. My friend had a vineyard on a fertile hillside. He spaded it, cleared it of stones, and planted the choicest vines. Within it, he built a watchtower and hewed out a wine press. Then he looked for the crop of grapes, but what it yielded was wild grapes. Now inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I had not done? Why, when I look for the crop of grapes, did it bring forth wild grapes? Now I will let you know what I mean to do with my vineyard. Take away its hedge, give it to grazing, break through its wall, let it be trampled. Yes, I will make it a ruin. It shall not be pruned or hoed, but overgrown with thorns and briars. I will command the clouds not to send rain upon it, the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is a house of Israel, and the people of Judah are his cherished plant. He looked for judgment, but see bloodshed, for justice, but hark the outcry, the word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, have no anxiety at all, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, make your request known to God. Then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. Then the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the chief priests and elders of the people, Hear another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a hedge around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a tower. Then he leased it to tenants and went on a journey. When vintage time drew near, he sent his servants to the tenants to obtain the produce. But the tenants seized the servants, and one they beat, another they killed, a third they stoned. Again he sent other servants, more numerous than the first ones, but they treated them in the same way. Finally he sent his son to them, thinking, they will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to one another, this is the heir, come, let us kill him and acquire his inheritance. They seized him and threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. What will the owner of the vineyard do to those tenants when he comes? They answered, He will put those wretched men to a wretched death and lease his vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the proper times. Jesus said to them, Did you never read in the scriptures, The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? By the Lord has this been done, and it is wonderful in our eyes. Therefore, I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that will produce its fruit. The Gospel of the Lord. <laughs> In the um, responsorial psalm today, the response was, well, we didn't we were able to do it as well as we used to. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. That theme of uh, Israel being the vineyard of the Lord is really pervasive in the uh, Hebrew scriptures. You see Isaiah speaking about it today in that, that first reading, and it's not by any means the first or only time that, that Isaiah speaks in those terms. Uh, what's significant in that passage of Isaiah is he, he, the Lord says, what more could I have done to care for my vineyard? care for his people that I've already done. And yet, the vineyard produces bad fruit. And of course, it's because people did not recognize Jesus's, or not Jesus, but God's action among his people. And they moved in another direction on infidelity to the covenant so often. And yet God continued to be faithful to them. And you see Jesus in the gospel using that same image of the vineyard in this uh, parable today. This to try to uh, get the religious leadership to understand that they are rejecting so much of what Jesus is saying and what the prophets have said down through the centuries. That's what's represented by the servants who are killed, the prophets who have spoken God's word 
so often to the people and were rejected, as Jeremiah was and many of the others as well. Uh, they're trying to, uh, Jesus is trying to convey the fact that the kingdom of God is for all people, but you must accept it. You must take it into your own heart. And that's what was happening with the, with the religious leadership. They were rejecting everything and uh, producing not the kind of fruit that the Lord would want from them. Part of the, the parable, at least to my mind, I'm sure to many people listening to it, doesn't seem very logical. Uh, by that I mean, how could the tenants think that by killing the son, they were going to inherit the vineyard? I mean, it logically doesn't make any sense. The inheritance doesn't go that way. The inheritance goes through families, etc. Uh, yet they begin to think that way, even though it's completely contrary to common sense. Unfortunately, it's not been unique to that situation. In fact, much more serious consequences have resulted from the fact that individuals and nations sometimes think they are masters of the world and they can go about by their own set of rules. All we have to do is look at the last century, how demagogues, dictators almost destroyed the world during the World War II. And it was this quest for power, violently rejecting God in their lives and trying to put themselves in place of that, to be masters of the world. And again, it's not even done totally on a worldwide scale like that. Sometimes we do that individually by putting aside teachings of what we believe to be true in place of trying to be masters of our own fate. It's only when we as individuals and as a people recognize the fact that the vineyard is God's. We are part of that vineyard and we want to do everything we can to cooperate with what God has given to us. When we recognize that, recognize our need for God and to move away from the, the delusion we are somehow masters of the whole world, that's when we see God for who he is. The gracious, caring, generous God who desires to bring us all into the glory of the kingdom of heaven. But sometimes that requires sacrifice in our own part in order to participate fully in that kingdom and to reject some of the secular values that we find around us. I'd like to give you an analogy of what, I, what I'm trying to say, which to me makes a lot of sense. Um, oh, it's well over, well over 40, almost 50 years ago now. And when I was in the seminary, I had a couple of friends, we, we played chess together. And we were hardly chess masters, but we enjoyed playing the game. Uh, I read, oh, maybe 20 years ago now, I don't know exactly when, about a chess match between two renowned chess masters, one from the United States, one from Russia. The game was, a, this particular game was a crucial one in their, I'll say, a seven, seven match games. In the process of that game, the American, uh, his queen, I don't know how many people are familiar with chess, but the queen is the most offensive piece on the board. So it was very uh, important in that sense. The queen was in jeopardy of being captured. Now there were a number of neat ways for the queen to move to get away from that or to bring another piece in to protect the queen. To the amazement of the people watching, the American moved the queen into a position where it was easily captured by any one or by three, one, any one of three pieces that the Russian opponent had. People looked at that and said, how could he make such an inexplicable explicable move? And then as they began to look at it more carefully, they realized that even though he had sacrificed the queen, he put his opponent in a position where he could not win the game. Of course, the object of chess is to capture the other king. He couldn't win the game. And recognizing that, being a steward himself, he stood up, shook his hand, conceded the game. That's the kind of attitude that, uh, as I say, is so significant to me. Sometimes we have to sacrifice something which is very important to us for a greater good. 
And that sometimes means making sure that the values that we have are worth giving up some things. Choose love over greed, peace over hostility, forgiveness over vengeance. All these things are the values that we want to integrate into our lives and to move away from those ephemeral things that might be giving us momentary pleasure but do not last. The object of our faith is to sometimes put ourselves in difficult position by sacrificing something, but for the greatest prize of all, that we will share in the promise of eternal life that Jesus gives to those who integrate his values into their lives. Wise and courageous people recognize this and try to do that in their lives. As I said so many times before, at this Mass, every Mass, pray that that's the kind of attitude we will have and ask for the gift of Jesus in the Eucharist when we receive him at communion time to enable our hearts to do exactly that, make those wise and sometimes courageous decisions to stay true to our values in Jesus. Stand now and join together in professing our faith. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. St. Paul tells us that by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, we should make our requests known to God, and so we now have the courage to do so. For the church, that we may be worthy of producing good fruit to build up the kingdom of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord. For all those suffering from COVID-19, especially now our President and First Lady, may they have a complete and speedy recovery, we pray to the Lord. Lord. May we foster and encourage a true and lasting respect for all human life, especially for the most vulnerable, we pray to the Lord. Lord. For those who harvest in the fields and on farms, in orchards and vineyards, may they be paid a just wage and treated humanely, we pray to the Lord. Lord. For our parish community, may we work together to bear fruit that helps our neighbors materially and spiritually, we pray to the Lord. Lord. For all who serve as law officers and first responders all over the world, may St. Michael, their protector, keep them safe from harm and bring them home safely to their families, we pray to the Lord. Lord, For all who serve in the military, especially your own parishioners, may God protect them as they serve our country, we pray to the Lord. Lord For those to be baptized this weekend, their funds and sponsors, especially Spencer William Snow and Austin Benjamin Snow, we pray to the Lord. Lord. For all of our deceased parishioners and benefactors, who all have recently died, including Deacon Reginald Roy, John Civitillo, Father John Patrick McHugh, Calvin J. Manship, Father George Loretti, and at this Mass, remember especially Alice Franconi, may they all share in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we pray to the Lord. O oh, loving God, you have entrusted us with the fruitful planet and your grace to continue to the task of building up your kingdom. Provide us with the tools we need to make this world wonderful in your eyes. 
We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed to you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, and work of human hands. my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your commands, and through the sacred mysteries which we celebrate with dutiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for when your children were scattered afar by sin through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself, that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit, might to the praise of your manifold wisdom be manifest as the church. And so, in company with choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim. of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. similar way, supper was ended, took the chalice. And once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of faith. We proclaim our death, O Lord, and profess our resurrection until you come again. Therefore, 
as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Leonard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, and with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed.
who cannot receive the Lord sacramentally today, we join in the prayer for our spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in this most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you're already there, and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, Almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received, so as to be transformed into what we consume through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Almighty God, bless us all, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Prayer to St. Michael. St. Michael the Archangel in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, thrust in hell Satan and the other evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Mass is ended. Let's go now in peace. Amen.